Paramount Pictures. It's the Tom Likas Show. Am I still on the air? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's in every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, here we are uh, just uh, about 10, is it 10 days? 10 days away. 10 days away for our next listener party. It's 10 days from today. It's Friday, June 15th. Many of you ask, when's our next Lister party? Well, uh, your father is coming to San Diego. The, this is the dad you never had. And uh, we are coming back to Canes on Mission Beach. That's going to be next Friday, June 15th, uh, with our friends, of course, from uh, 1037 Free FM in San Diego. The doors open around 2. The show is from 3 to 7 San Diego time. Those of you who were at Cane's for our listener party last year know how outrageous it got. It's a 21 and over event. And by the way, Cane's is right on the beach. I want to tell you in advance, by the way, dress skimpily. Men and women both because there's no air conditioning. You're on the beach, so we're depending on those ocean breezes. Well, I must say that in Southern California this year... Heat has not been a problem. <laughs> this has been one of the lousiest springs on record. And certainly since I've been in Southern California, which is now 20 summers, 20 summers, uh, this is the uh, the worst weather we've had. Cold. June gloom started in April. And <laughs> it's continuing right into June. Just awful. So uh, you'll probably be uh, happy to be with that crush of bodies at Canes on Mission Beach. Those of you who were there last year know that uh, there was a line out the door that went on for so long that uh, when we left, there was still a line to get in. People didn't know we were leaving. There was still a line to get in. That's how crazy it was. So we recommend you get there as early as possible. And we also recommend that uh, just as we recommend you come there and dress uh, skimpily so you'll be... Uh, uh, dressed beach appropriate. I would say beach appropriate would be good for this event. But uh, also, if you are a uh, SoCal 9 or 10, and ladies, uh, you know that the standards here are pretty damn high, and you would like to, uh, of course, uh, come backstage and hang out with the staff and management of the Tom Likas show, maybe get a ride in the limo later on, all you have to do is send us your photograph and show us how hot you really are. And Gary Zabransky, our producer, will be going through all of these, and he will uh, pick a certain number of women to get in through the back door. Just send your photograph and a cell phone number to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Send that in right now, and, uh, you know, again, it'll be the first few really hot chicks. They will be backstage with us. They will be in the VIP area. We'll probably have a few drinks for you, girls. Uh, but you have to be 21 or over. Now, remember, uh, you girls who are planning on coming, uh, this is not to bring your husband and surprise him for his birthday. It's not to bring your boyfriend. It's not to bring your best friend, your gay friend. It's hot chicks only. Hot chicks only. You know, we're looking to stock the pond here is what we're looking to do, and uh, that's just the way it is. So uh, if you uh, are going with your husband, he can stand in line by himself, or you can stand there with him, but he's not coming in the back door. Nor are any fat or fugly friends, or gay friends, or anybody really who is not a, a female 9 or a 10. That's what we're looking for. 
So, ladies, if you are a, a 9 or a 10 and you're uh, looking to uh, come to our show next Friday, June 15th at Canes on Mission Beach, send us your photograph to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And if you want details on our event next Friday, June 15th, the Friday before Father's Day, as the dad you never had comes to San Diego once again, uh, all you need to do is go to BlowMeUpTom.com. All the details are there. All of them. All of them. Go to BlowMeUpTom.com for details. And we're looking forward to coming back to San Diego. That is going to be a killer, killer event. Thank you so much for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Here we are on the lot at Paramount Pictures and enjoying the hell out of it. We are having a great time here. And uh, look at this email I received here, and I think this person's on to something. This is Daniel. Daniel lives in Los Angeles. He um, just sent this to me today, and I uh, was reading my email today. I'm like, this is, this, he's on to something. It's a very good point he makes here. He says, Dear Tom, well, the beginning of the end has happened in America. The feminists have finally convinced many men that they are stupid. You know the study, Tom. More women are now enrolled in colleges than men. That's true by the way. And some colleges have special recruiting programs designed to enroll young men into their ranks because male enrollment is now diminishing. That's true, too. Daniel goes on to say, somewhere and somehow many men are being convinced that they are no longer intelligent or productive. I find this result of men not seeking higher education to be both insulting and disgusting. This trend could become epidemic, and it would be an absolute tragedy if American men continue to allow themselves to be steered down a road that leads to oblivion. Every day, men are exposed to advertisements, TV programming, and other types of media outlets and should be appalled how men are depicted as clueless, stupid, bungling morons who can't function in normal society as fathers, boyfriends, or as independent thinking men. These degrading messages clearly have the stench of feminism providing the impetus. See, he looked up impetus when I said look it up. On the contrary, we men are proven to be capable and intelligent and should never lose sight of our monumental accomplishments. Don't succumb to the message that women are good and men are bad. I personally have never believed that behind every great man there is a great woman. I am now convinced that behind every man who has failed there is a nagging bitch who crushed his dreams. And by contrast, the great men have the ability to shut out or shut up their nagging bitches. That by itself is a monumental accomplishment, says Daniel. Thanks, Tom, for speaking on behalf of men everywhere. You may be an atheist, but you are preaching the gospel of men. Signed a new lister, Daniel. Well, Daniel, you make a very interesting point, and you've kind of pulled together some of the issues we've talked about separately here on the program. The fact that uh, television uh, portrays men as stupid and incompetent, as deadbeats, uh, bad lovers, lousy caregivers... Uh, people who uh, are not capable of doing housework, are not capable of asking for directions, are not capable of doing just about anything. Uh, sitcoms, the uh, primary plot on sitcoms with this a married couple is that there's a fat, lazy guy with his super hot, intelligent, wise-cracking wife. Right? That's pretty much the plot of a lot of these sitcoms. And the guy is a dope and the woman always is right. Uh, and, and we've been talking about this for some time now. Uh, the talk about how stupid men are and how uh, men, women don't need men and what have you. But what Daniel has done here is he's tied together, and I think uh, uh, this is a legitimate connection. He's tied together the fact that we have beaten men and boys down in this country. And we have uh, tried to imply somehow that girls are good and boys are bad, whether it be T-shirts that say boys are stupid, throw rocks at them or whatever. This has been going on now for a generation and a half in this country. And now it's showing itself in the attendance at uh, colleges, where now there are more women in universities than men. That's true. 
more women go to college than men. The percentage of people in college is now a majority women. And of course, on top of that, women have taken over the campus. Uh, you can't uh, tell a dirty joke. You can't look funny at a woman. You can't uh, say anything sexist. They'll have you in front of a tribunal of some kind. I mean, it's just outrageous. It's just outrageous. And so uh, I think Daniel makes a very good point. It's time for men to stand up and say, you know what? We pay for everything, which we do. We're not deadbeats. Hell, in most cases, we bought her the car. We bought her the house. We pay the utilities. We pay the grocery bills. We pay for the, uh, the, 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 the gas for her car. We make her car payments. In many cases, we pay her student loan payments. We should not forget that we made oh, just about everything possible. We invented almost every great product out there. Uh, you name the product, it's probably been invented by a man in most cases. And I think uh, men in just 35 short years have accepted the idea that we are inferior, that our opinions don't count, that we're dopes, that we're incapable, that we're not worthy. And I, I do believe that Daniel makes a very good point here. You know, men put this whole thing together. Let's not let's keep it together. Let's not fall apart now, boys. Let's remember that this, this, this country could not function without us. And I keep telling you, boys, stop at the trade schools. And stop moving to be with your girlfriend who's going to college somewhere while you're not. Let's, uh, I want you boys going to college. I want you guys getting degrees. I want you guys making the most money so you get the hottest chick in the end. So you have the nicest house in the end. So you have uh, the most wealth in the end. Because God knows when you get divorced, you're not going to get any of these things. I'll tell you that right now. What are your thoughts on this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Oh, Tom, you're so not nice. I'm just honest. I know. I love you for it. The Tom Likas Show. Ah, yes. I know Dean J. Domenio will be uh, glad to know that uh, Tom Sizemore turned himself in. Dean, of course, the Perez Hilton of the Tom Likas Show staff. Always scouring the Internet looking for stuff like this. All right, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. A listener named uh, Daniel wrote in and made some very good points about why more women go to college than men. And it's because uh, the effect, uh, the cumulative effect all these years of uh, men being told that they're inferior to women, they're unnecessary. Women saying they're smarter, TV commercials saying they're smarter. Well, men have finally bought in. And you hear these dopes calling in telling me they go into trade school, or they dropped out of school for a few years to follow their girlfriends or whatever. And uh, come on, boys. <laughs> What's going on? Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Father. Son, how are you? How are you? Great. Well, my story kind of, it's kind of funny you would bring up this subject, Tom, because um, it hit me when I heard it. Um, I actually did have a girlfriend straight out of high school, and, um, you know, she wanted to go off to college, and I wanted to go to college too, but she kind of wanted to go more, and she, you know, kind of reeled me in to move in with her and to, to go live with her and kind of work while she goes to school. So I did this, you know, not listening to your show, not really knowing, you know, Tom, you know, like it's 101, you know, I was a boy and, you know, she sucked everything out of me, basically. So, so you uh, gave up college? I gave up college. I didn't go. I became one of these guys that, you know, was just working for his woman and was, you know, was basically supporting her, man. So she had, you, thought, she, had you paying for, she had you paying for everything. Basically, pretty much. Come come to find out, she was cheating on me with some other some other guy at school. Because she had no respect for you. Exactly. So I just I just said, you know what, one day someone one of my friends, one one good friend named is Art out there in LA told me, you know what, bro, listen to the Tom Likas show. Turn it on. And I turned it on, and you were hitting points, man, that it was you were talking to me. You were telling me step by step by step what I was doing wrong. 
And you know what? I'll be first to say that whoever's out there listening, this guy is telling the truth, man. He's preaching. I want you to know that after I listened to your show for a couple of weeks, I left that bitch, moved my stuff out, got my own place, went back to school, and uh, I'm going to graduate in about a year and a half. Very a nice. Very nice. So, Very good. Um, you know what? I got to thank you for that. No BS. You're the real deal. I I can't thank you enough. You know, I got my buddies. I'm preaching your word, man. I got my buddies trying to listen to the Tom Likas show, and they're loving it. By Every, the way, by the way, how did she react when you dumped her? Oh, man. She, you know what? That's the funniest part. She was crying and all sad. And, you know, even after the fact that I told her, you know what, I found out about this other guy, she still had the nerve to, to kind of, you know, she was pulling me in again, you know, kind of making me feel sorry for her. But I, in my little head, I had, I had like a little Tom talking in my head saying, don't do it. Don't be stupid. And pretty, pretty much just left and said, you know what? You're a bitch. Here's your dude. You know what? Do what you got to do. Come to find out now from, um, friends, she's not doing so good. She dropped out of school and now she's trying to get a rich guy to marry. Of course she is. You know? So the best thing I can tell people out there is, you know, hey, you're doing the real deal. Boys, you know what? I was a boy one time because I think everyone has to go through it. But if you listen to Tom, you don't have to go through that misery. Listen to me. I'm telling you, it can, it, you can better yourself. You know, guys out there, come out of high school, go to college, do your thing. Be, be, be somebody in life and watch how these girls just come at you. Right now I'm in school. I'm almost graduating. I got I got ass left and right. I'm single. I'm loving it. And there's nothing better than not having a bitch right beside you. <laughs> I'm loving it, Tom. I'm loving it. It's not even funny. It's it's crazy ass left and right. Dave, I am proud, and I thank you for that call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Johnny. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, baby. All right, right on, man. Hey, I listen to you every day on the way home from work. Love what you have to say every day. I appreciate everything you've done, man. Thank you for that. Yeah. Hey, I want to let you know, uh, I graduated high school 2004. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, I took a career uh, guidance class. Um, basically, the teacher was very upfront with us, told us this, what you're talking about right now on your show, that women are more acceptable into college just because of the fact that men, when they're younger, they get pushed on the sports more so. Uh huh. And they were told, uh, you know, be good at sports, progress, and be a famous athlete. But you know what? Coming out of our high school, we had, what, 1%, one or two people, I would, sh I should say, become a professional athlete. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, it kind of pisses me off because when I came out of high school, I never went to college. I went to work right away because of the, neg the negativity from our teachers about this situation right here. Wow. Yeah, so this is this is not just coming from you and the Internet and the news. This is coming from teachers in high school. That's outrageous. That saying, yeah, that are saying these things. And, I, you know, this is the first time I've ever called in. I'm glad I was able to talk about this subject because, to me, I have a couple of smart friends that went on to college and did their thing, but the ones that were the lower skill, that weren't college material, went off they got, we all got construction jobs. And now we're sweating every day. And yeah, of course. Every day. Yeah. And getting and, bossed you know, around by the women who got their college degrees. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I got an ex-girlfriend who's in Minnesota right now uh, becoming a doctor. You know, just because she was told she was smart and she got all the good grades and what have you. But it, it, unless unless a guy's good at a sport, you know, that that's the way that they put it basically in high school and it, it and i totally agree with you on this tom honestly this is a great subject to talk about man this is totally you know above the uh what you usually do talk about and i, I like this man i like i like what you're doing right here buddy keep it Matt, going thank you give daniel credit because he's the guy who really pieced this all together i gotta give that listener credit thank you for the call david on the tom like his show hello david 
Yeah, uh, Tom. Yes, sir. Hey, what's going on? I kind of, kind of got like a, the same story going on that happened to me about six years ago. You know, uh, straight out of high school, I, uh, Lori, you got to the uh, straight out of high school, I, uh, was going to college. I was going to be one of those graphic designers. I was like all into it. I was doing real good in school. I was about halfway into one of those, uh, colleges. And, uh, I wasn't listening to your show, wasn't following at the time. I was young. I didn't know about the show. And uh, my girlfriend at the time ends up getting pregnant. Oh, God. Yeah, one of those. Uh, the, if I would have listened to your story back then, you know, it would have been a different story, you know. Why, why, did you let that, why did you let that happen? I was young, dumb, and I didn't pay attention to anything. I was doing my own thing, you know. Didn't have any uh, a dad like you to tell me, hey, you know. Watch your, you know what, yeah. you know, something like that. And uh, it, I took a break. You know, I, I went to the, the administrators and told them, hey, you know. I Which mean, is, by the way, the worst thing to do. Mm -hmm. I told them, you know what, I'm going to take you just a, a, like a, like a three-month break because I need to save up money. I want to come back to school. They said, okay, fine. Okay, we'll stop taking the payments from your loan company. We'll, um, when you come back. It's fine. You're, you're, you know, you're good to go. Just come back in the papers. Well, okay, I did that. I got, I got, took off school for a while. Right away, I got me a full time job, and started saving money, and buying stuff. Well, when I was trying to starting to get my stuff together to go back to school, I go in. They tell me, they tell me, okay, you know, I go in my first class. I get my first schedule. Then I get sent to uh, the administrator's office. They're like, please come to uh, financial services, actually. I go over there, they're like, oh, well, you, we haven't got a payment from you in three months. I'm like, well, I had this paper signed, blah, blah. Well, come to find out, they were still taking the money from the loan company. Yeah, so again, you know, I, when I say taking time off is the worst thing to do, you found it out the hard way. And so ultimately, uh, what have you done? Did you finish college? No, that's one thing. I, they wouldn't let me go back. And, I, and after I tried to go back, they wanted me to sort these things out. And since I'm the first one, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have my parents co-signed for me. Or, no, 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 actually, you know what, they didn't. So everything was under my name because I started when I was 18. All right, let's not try to get too far off track here. We're talking about how your girl got pregnant and now you're out of school. And, by the way, did she have the baby? Yeah, she had the baby. There's no way she was not going to keep it. And, I mean, I, I wasn't listening to you. I would, if I would have known what I know now, what I could have done, I would have done it. But, you know, now here I am paying for it. Um, I'm starting to get back on track, but it's taken me six years. I got a little girl, of course. Um, I'm in debt, about 20 grand. That does not go down, and it does not go away in a bankruptcy. And I've tried any other way. My credit's screwed. Yeah, you can't get away from a student loan by filing bankruptcy anymore. They changed the laws on that. Yeah, exactly. I found that I was looking into that. I was like, you know, I'm going to scratch it out, start all over, and maybe go to another school or, you know, figure something out. Well, there's no way that's coming off. As soon as I tried, they said, you know what? It's not coming off. It's a student loan. It's government. You you have to do that. You have to you have to pay it off. Well, like a few years back, I got a, my income tax check. I was waiting for it. I was getting a, you know, a good chunk of change, about 3600 bucks. Waiting for the check in the mail. Instead of the check in the mail, I got a letter saying that, uh, thank you for paying, you know, the student loan company, blah, blah. It's a government loan. They took it. Yep, that's what they so do. So now, every, no matter what, I'm paying for it. And it's, the, the amount does not go down. It started at 20000 what I owe. And I just looked at my credit, and it's showing that I owe them 23000 when they just took 3600 from me. Well, they're adding interest to it. And do you even know what interest rate you're paying? Probably not. Uh, I don't. I'm trying, I'm, actually, I, uh, why, by the way, why don't you know that? Well, because last time I talked to them, that since then the school moved and they got uh, they changed the. Uh, I guess the company went to. Uh, Irrelevant. Why don't you know how much interest you're paying on that loan? Because when I signed it, I just signed when I just wanted to go to school. Why don't you find out how much interest you're paying on the loan? Aren't you curious? Yeah, I am. Actually. Why don't you do? Why do you need me to tell you this? Why do you need me to tell you this? Hmm? You're still a pussy. Why do you need me to tell you this? Uh, you don't. I need to do it on my own. But you didn't. Yeah, exactly. All this over a kid, you know? But that's not why you don't know how much interest you're paying. You don't know because you don't want to know. 
Well, I guess you're true. There. You're right there, you know? Like now, usually you, are, all, but, you, you know? all you know is that the amount keeps going up, but you don't even know why. You might be paying 30% interest. You don't even know. Yeah, that's true. And you're not even curious enough to find out on your own because you're afraid to find out the answer. You got me there. Damn straight I do. Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. We want what you have. Oh. But you want what we have. Money, power. So our job is to withhold that from you. Are you trying to turn the men into gold diggers then? Is that you mean? No, that not quite. Like We're poon diggers. The Tom Likas Show. It's out like a sh- 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 show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. T on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Good evening, Sensei. Good evening, dear. How are you tonight? Do you care, darling? Absolutely. Doing great. Great. Me too. So, I was listening to your show as usual, and I was listening to you talk about how there are more women in college than there are men, which, like you said, is very true. However, there was an article done recently, and unfortunately I can't remember the stat, but I remember it was more than half. Many of the women that are in college today do not intend to actually utilize the power behind their degree. Many of them are holding on to traditional values even though they're in school, they still have the idea that, okay, when I graduate, I'm going to go on to marry this great catch who's going to let me stay at home and raise my kids. So I'm kind of wondering who looks more stupid, these men who unfortunately are not attending school or these females who are going really kind of so as to waste their time. There, there was a story just the last couple of days about how many women go to college and have no intention of using their degrees for anything. They, uh, they don't make more money uh, than their uh, husbands. They uh, meet men and uh, ultimately uh, choose careers where they will make less money than the men they're with. This, this is true, and, and that's why I had to call you, because I hear you saying this in a manner in which it's almost like women are putting themselves in position to try to be better than men. But in all actuality, that's not true. You have so many women who, I'm 32, and and even in my time, you were raised with the whole Cinderella syndrome. You know, we're supposed to seek Prince Charming, have a wonderful wife, or I'm sorry, have a wonderful life with all the great kids and the great comforts that he provides. So I, I honestly, I feel more sorry for these women who are investing all this time who could do better but are really just looking to kind of sit at home and have him be their meal ticket. Many of them are looking for the MRS degree. I'm sorry? Many of them are looking to get their MRS. Any any degree, if, if you're pursuing a degree, you're going on for your higher education, to me, you should try to do something with that. You've never heard of the MRS degree, huh? <laughs> I have heard of the MRS degree. Oh, I just make it sure. And, and actually, I think it's the most silly degree, but I'm just that type of woman, so I won't <laughs> condemn anybody else who wants that degree. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, if, if you're going to do something, if you're going to put your time into to a higher education, actually do something with that. You know, I don't, I honestly, a lot of women may not see that men are being demonized in the media. I certainly didn't. And I actually asked my man, do you feel this way? Yes, he does. Well, I understand what you're saying, T. You make a lot of good points, and I thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, Sumit, you're on the Tom Lankis Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Uh, Tom, uh, I was listening to your show earlier, and uh, you did mention that... Uh, most of the sitcoms and most of the uh, soap operas are showing like uh, men are more uh, becoming like a wuss or like a wimp under uh, women. Yes. But I also wanted to tell you that this is not an African syndrome uh, because I'm from India and I moved to US like three years ago. 
and even in Indian soap operas, uh, they show the same thing. I, I see like uh, all the housewives and all the girlfriends making the big, big decisions uh, uh, that men should be taking or uh, that men could could be taking. But for some reason, they always show that women take the major decisions. I, I, in fact, there was this one serial where like a nine-year-old or a ten-year-old girl was taking like big decisions in her life for the whole family. Unbelievable. Yep. Wow. Well, I, I hate to hear that that's a worldwide phenomenon, but it could very well be true. Vanessa on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, how are you? Great. That's good. Um, you know, I was just buzzing in, you know, and I half agree with what you're saying and everything, but, you know, to these guys that are basically saying that they're not going to college because their girlfriends told them to, they honestly shouldn't be blaming their girlfriends or their ex-girlfriends because they could have made that decision on their own, you know, whether or not they wanted to go to college. If the girl could, told them, you know, stay at home, I'll go to college, you work, you know, we'll rent an apartment or whatever, and they decided not to go to college, that's on them. They could have easily said, no, I'm going to go to school because I want to. Yeah, but you understand, uh, first of all, this has something to do with socializing. We now have adult men who over the years grew up uh, they were raised by single mothers or they were raised in divorced homes. And uh, they grew up hearing this message for 20 years. The men are inferior, men are stupid, men are pigs, men are dogs, men are deadbeats, men are useless, women don't need men. They've been hearing this over and over since they were babies. And so, yes, well, yes, obviously, ultimately, you have to blame the person who uh, has uh, has uh, uh, done the wrong thing. But let's face it, uh, we are now raising men as pussies. Yeah, and I think that's why they should honestly, like, step up. Like, you know, with me, with my boyfriend. They don't know how to step up. They've been raised by women. And they've been raised by bitter women who got divorced and who told their boys that, that, that men are creeps. And they told their boys their dads are creeps. And then they told their boys to pee sitting down. That could be true. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying it could be true. Most likely is for a lot of people. But it's like, you know, when I see it's like my sister, you know, she had a deadbeat boyfriend and thankfully she dumped him. But it's like, you know, she's looking at her son and everything and she's encouraging her son, you know, be better, do better, you know, do better for yourself. She's not telling him don't be like your dad because, well, that would kind of, you know, he's trying to look up to his father at the same time. But, you There's know, a lot of that going on. There's a lot of women saying your dad's a creep, your dad's a pig, yeah, your no. dad's an idiot, your dad's an a-hole. Yeah, she's avoiding saying that in front of her kids. Well, guess what? A lot of women don't them. avoid saying that in front of their kids. That is why you have this problem throughout the country. We're not looking at individuals that you know. We're looking in general here. And in general, this is the reason you have men go into trade schools or drop it out of school to go follow their girlfriends who are going to college. I get what you're saying. And this is the result you get. That's true. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> she collapsed like a house of cards. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Trey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. Hey, yeah, man, I heard about, you know, the percentages about, you know, men not attending college. And I'm a I'm an African-American man, and I'm 22 years old. So imagine, you know, men not already going to college. It's already, like, black dudes like me not going to college. Like, I go to school right now. Like, when I walk around, like, the first thing chicks ask me, oh, Oh, what sport do you play? You know what I'm saying? And I like, I just laugh at him because I'm like, I'm not here. You know, I don't play sports. You know, I, I'm a computer programming engineer. And, you know, that's my, that's what I'm going for. And right now, you know, I'm about to be graduating next year, Tom. But I had to call you on because I was dating this chick, man. And like, this chick was one of the type of chicks. She was really hot, but she already had the, her life plan for her. Parents both had money. She, she had a lame job at H&M, some clothing store. You know, it really didn't do nothing with her life. But it was like the, like the soap opera shows and like the TV shows. Every time I said something, it was stupid. Every time I want to do something, oh, that's stupid. But, you know, I finally got tired of dealing with it because I've been listening to you, Tom, and I just dumped her, dude. And, How'd that and I, feel? You know, How did that feel? I get more ass than, I, I don't even know what to do no more. I get more cheap time, and, it, and it's just ridiculous. Like I said, I'll be telling all my friends, like, y'all need to go to college, dude. Like, this is like free, like, poon just running around campus. You know what I'm saying, Tom? <laughs> that's absolutely true. Man, and Tom, he's like, it's like, Crazy, and this girl, she's just always putting me down, just like the TV show, Tom. And I was like, you know what? I wasn't going to school. Like, right when I got out of high school, I didn't go to school, but I just started listening to you, and I was like, man, I got to make something of myself. So I just 
started going to school, and that's when it seemed like she started dissing me even harder when I was going to school. And then when I broke up with her, it's like she still calls me to this day, Tom, asking me, what am I doing, who am I doing this with? And, and sometimes I am kind of stupid because I take her calls, Tom, but I can just tell, like, she spikes me so much when I, I can just hear it in her voice, you know what I'm saying? And, and I just love it, Tom, and I just got to thank you. Like I said, man, to all the... All the dudes out there go to school, but all the black dudes out there, you're like, y'all got to get in school, man. Y'all got to want to be something of y'all, man. Like, I listen to you, Tom, every day, and I, I envy you. You drive around the election, drive to the house in the Hollywood Hills. Tom, I envy that. I want to be I want to be your next-door neighbor someday. You, you know should be, like, you should be my next-door neighbor. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tom, like, and I'm a black dude, and I love you, Tom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I preach you to everybody. I preach you love to it. my mom, my sister. They hate me because I know you, and they just hate you. But <laughs> I'm going to always listen to you, Tom, and all, no matter what, you always have a black son right here, man. Trey, I'm very proud of you. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. I appreciate this, man. Hey, can you blow me up, Tom? Of course I can. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Nikki on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Nikki. First time, long time. Thank you. I just want to say that I... I agree with everything you say, and I really appreciate everything you're doing for the men out there because it seems like there are so many women going to college, but I feel like I work for a debt management company, and the majority of my clients are these young men who are working for some type of trade job, and they have girlfriends living with them, and I always ask them, you know, is your girlfriend contributing to the household? And he says, no, she's going to school. Oh, boy. So... Here I have clients, these, these young men, anywhere between the age of 18 to 20 years old, who are, you know, they're supporting themselves with credit cards, and they're doing all this because they're supporting their girlfriends while they're going through school. So I, I agree with what you're saying, and I think that um, I think that men deserve a lot more credit than what they get. I've, I'm married, so, I mean, of course, I don't, you know, I don't really apply to a lot of things you say, but, you know, I was one of the lucky ones who got into a good marriage, but... You know, women don't want to contribute what they should, and they want to be treated like princesses. They're so they're so into the fact that, you know, men are supposed to be the prince charming, and they're supposed to be treated like a princess, and they don't have to do anything for it. But if women would take care of their men the way that they should, then they might, you know, they might be treated with more respect. But men just, you know, they get treated like crap all the time, and... Women expect so much more out of men than they should. You are certainly right about that. Thank you for that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, how are you doing, Tom? Great. Because we're talking about men being demoralized and demonized. I mean, in the media. Yeah. In uh, I live in San Diego, and every at every holiday, the CHP puts out an ad saying that they're going to be cracking down on drunk drivers. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I hear these ads all the time. I don't know if you watch the one that's on the TV. Every one of the individuals they pull over for drunk driving is a man. And of course. And every one of them is, is about 25, 30 years old. It's not women like the one in Billings, Montana, who offered to show her boobs to the cop, right? That's No, it's just it's only men. And as a matter of fact, out of everybody that I know that has ever been had a problem with DUI, all of them are women, actually. Not saying that no men do that, but every single one of them is a woman. But yeah, I, I, my experience has been it's about half and half, but it certainly is not all men or even a majority men. But if you see that, if you see if you see that commercial, all of them are men in that. So that's exactly exactly a, a case in point. I hate hearing that, Richard, but I totally believe you, and I I thank you for the call. You may have some opinions about this. If you couldn't get in, our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And ladies, if you're a 9 or a 10 and you're planning on meeting us in San Diego next Friday, send your photo and your cell phone up to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.